started. Um, I, do you want me to introduce, uh, I want to introduce uh, um, Rafael Rodriguez Beltran. Um, I might just do it in English because the notes I have are in English. <laughs> and yeah. it seems like it's something to translate on the fly. Um, so I'll introduce myself to you. I'm Professor Michelle Hardesty. I teach US Literatures and American Studies, Cultural Studies at Hampshire College. And I'm part of the Cuba Exchange Program that is there. We've been um, working for 16 years, leading both a semester abroad program every spring. Um, also, every year we have a scholar in residence at Hampshire in the fall. And this year, Rafael um, Rodriguez Letran is our is our scholar in residence. And we'll be this is we'll be here for one more week yeah. um, before um, before heading off. Uh, Rafael Rodriguez Beltran is the Vice President of the Alejo Carpentier Foundation in Havana, which is also our program's new institutional home. And so he's become a, a really important part of our steering committee and teaching faculty. Um, and this past spring, he had supervised one student semester-long independent project. It was called Slowly Exploding Perspective in Cuban Anti-Slavery Literature Throughout Time. And um, Professor Rodriguez Beltran is a, is a Carpentier scholar who has written and lectured extensively on Carpentier and has prepared and published critical editions of the authors Akue Yambao and Concierto Barroco. He's a scholar in multiple languages and in language pedagogy, especially French, and he is also currently doing work on the image of Cuba in very contemporary French literature. Um, so today, um, Professor Rodriguez Beltran is going to be giving a talk on um, Explosion in the Cathedral by Alejo Carpentier, a novel known in, in Spanish as El Siglo de las Luces. Um, so please help me to welcome him today. Thank you very much. In the first place, I would like to, to say thank you to the, this university that has given me the possibility of addressing to you with this uh, talk. In the second place, you see already that my English is not very good, but I am. I feel that there are lots of uh, colleagues here that are very competent in both languages. If something doesn't doesn't work, I do my best to to, to communicate. But some, sometimes there will be some uh, mistakes. You will be very kind of you <laughs> that them pass. I, I'm concentrating what I'm trying to say. Only if I, there's something that you don't understand, of course, you, you will stop me and will, will tell me, okay? But, um, as a matter of fact, I proposed other novels to be analyzed. <laughs> because it is a huge one. This is one of the most important novels, not only for the production of Alejo Carpentier, but for the history of novel in my country. My country has a literary history that begins in the, 19, in the 18th century. But it's also one of the most important novels in, uh, in the context of Latin American literature. I, 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 it's very interesting maybe to say that when uh, our colleague Hardesty has said that I, I am very interested in French literature, French uh, culture in general. And you know this um, dictionary, La Rousse, uh, that is very popular in, uh, in everywhere. In the, their edition for 2000, they made a sort of, uh, I, I suppose it was a sort of survey about the most uh, important films of the century, most important persons of the century, etc., etc. And there, there is a section where it said, the most important novels in the century. Among the Latin American novels, there were mentioned only two. A Hundred Years of Solitude or Loneliness. Mm -hmm. Solitude and uh, Explosion in a Cathedral. Besides, there was also fiction by, uh, by uh, Borges, but fiction is not really a novel. Uh, he is among uh, writers that you know perfectly because there are writers uh, that belong to your, uh, I mean, to your American uh, leadership, like uh, novels like uh, Manhattan Transfer, The Great Gatsby, and so on. So you see, it has been placed among these great, great novels of the history of literature in the 20th century. 
that's the novel that I uh, I am going to to talk about. But I was told also that maybe uh, it would be interesting to point out some uh, issues concerning the life of Alejo Carpentier because there are some points that are not very, very clear about his life. So I begin with who is Alejo Carpentier. I talk about, of course, the Tzilio de las Luces and some contradictory outcomes that, uh, that are mm, uh, showed in, uh, shown in the, in the novel. There is this part of my talk that is we have to do something that's a quotation from the novel. I spent quite a bit uh, at the end. And finally, the title in English, of course, in, in the cathedral to explain what I think is the reason why the translator decided to give this uh, title to the novel. It's the only language where the title has been changed. And it is very interesting to know that uh, why this uh, is like that. Who is Alejo Carpentier? I am going to be uh, very quick in that. And you have here um, the, the Alejo Carpentier I knew when, we, when I was very young. That's a very long time ago, of course. <laughs> um, and smiling. Uh, you won't find many photographs of Carpentier <laughs> smiling. He was only, always uh, very, a, seri a very serious person. And who is Alejo Carpentier? In the first part, in the first place, he was born in Lausanne, Switzerland, in 1904. Uh, his life, during him, his whole life, he said that he was born in Havana. And after his death in 1980, her widow, his widow, continued to say that he was born in Havana, even though we knew all that it wasn't true. He was not born in Switzerland. And there is a reason why he decided not to reveal this uh, place of birth and the birthplace. No? Uh, but um, I explain why. His parents settled in Havana in the, ten in the, in the second de decade of the, of the, se of the century because his father was uh, uh, an architect, and Cuba was a new republic. You know, we, we, were, we were the last uh, country of Amer Latin America to be freed from the Spanish um, colonialism. And uh, it was a new republic, very young, uh, and there were lots of, uh, of buildings. And so he decided that maybe in America, uh, particularly in Cuba, he would find work. And it was real, while the price of the sugar was very high in the in, in the international market because of the uh, second uh, of the first world world war, but um, uh, it didn't went very well after what you will see. Uh, 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 the teenager Alejo begins translating short stories by Anatole France. He was uh, French and speak uh, see his uh, language was uh, first. His mother tongue is French. Her mother is a Russian, but as a Russian that speaks all the time in French, he never uh, uh, learned to speak in Russian, and uh, his father, neither his father spoke uh, uh, Russian, so they spoke uh, uh, French all the time. And he began translating this um, works by Anatole de France that was uh, an idol of the, the, the Cubans at the time. The people that read. In 1921, his father abandons their home, and Carpentier becomes a journalist. The only thing that he knew to do how to do was to write, so he decided to become a journalist. And he be he began um, publishing in the most important um, journals and magazines of the of the time. That makes that he is uh, in contact with what we call a group of minorista. It's a group of intellectuals that are very related to uh, avant-garde, uh, European avant-garde. Um, and they uh, try mainly to uh, develop other in, 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 uh, a culture that is more uh, wide, wider than the, um, the culture we, we were uh, used to in Cuba, I mean the Spanish culture. They looked to England, they looked to the United States, they looked to France mainly and other countries in order to widen their, their, their ways of uh, thinking and appreciating the arts. 
uh, he is imprisoned for a political reason in 1927. All the Cubans, uh, this uh, imprisonment uh, lasted very a very little time for Cubans, but for um, for the foreigners, they were uh, immediately uh, expelled from the country. I don't know the word in English. But we expelled somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Deported. Deported. Uh -huh. That's the word. <laughs> in, in Spanish, it's about the same. He were de were deported, and her mother, his mother, um, decided to forge a document saying that uh, he was Cuban. He found a lawyer that was willingly he he forged this document saying that he was born in Havana, in a in a very popular uh, street of uh, our capital, and so from that day to his death. He said always that he was wor born in Havana. In every place, he said so. But all the people that were in prison because of this uh, political reason were supposed to be controlled by the police every week. They had to go to the police station to uh, to say that they were there, etc., etc. But uh, there is a congress where there are French um, uh, journalists and uh, friends of him. A, a poet, a French poet, uh, Robert Desnos, uh, gives him, his, gives Carpentier his passport and his documents, and he is able to escape from Cuba under the name of Robert Desnos. Desnos arrives to the boat, and he says that he have, had been, uh, uh, ha, had lost their documents, and he can also go in the same boat. And when he arrives in France, he. Uh, in, a w in a certain way, he uh, gets a, a, a Cuban passport. That's uh, the this history of how he went out uh, of Cuba. That was in 1928. Uh, from 1928 to 1939, he is voluntary. He is a in his voluntary exile during Gerardo Machado's dictatorship. Carpentier writes essays, chronicles, articles for European and Latin American journals and reviews. It's very important to note that in this moment, Carpentier begins to do something that he loved all, during all his life. He was a sort of ambassador of Amer Latin American culture in Europe and a sort of European ambassador in Latin, in, 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 in Latin America, mainly in Cuba, of course, but in other uh, uh, countries of Latin America. He serves, he's a sort of... Uh, of uh, an ambassador, a cultural ambassador for both uh, areas. Uh, he also creates uh, this uh, review, uh, Iman, that means in English? Magnet. Magnet, no? Yeah, magnet. Magnet. Yeah. Uh, a, a very symbolic uh, name, no? For a title book for the review, a review devoted to Latin American culture. And there is the first pub publication of some of the most important uh, intellectuals of the time, like Neruda, for instance, like Widogro, and others that published for the first time in their lives in this um, review. This review has only one number. <laughs> <laughs> The second number is very interesting. We have it in our foundation, but it was only the, the proofs that were given guaranteed because the, the, the second number never saw the light of the, of the public. But it's very interesting, and it, uh, and it uh, continues the same vein, in the same vein. I mean, uh, Latin American culture and all Europeans talking about La Latin America, etc. Then in Spain, he publishes his first novel, Equa Yambao. At the time, uh, Carpentier thought that Equa Yambao meant um, God be blessed. We know today that that is not the meaning of the, the word, but it's not very important. It's a novel that deals with, uh, la, uh, with, uh, with all that has to, um, the, the, the principal character, character is a black man who lives, who, who lives in, a, in a sugar mill in Cuba. He, uh, he works there and uh, he belongs to this uh, syncretic, as we call them, uh, religions in Cuba. Mainly, uh, in this case, he is an abacua. So the novel is a sort of, uh, of Hybrid, you say. 
He wrote about it's a novel hybrid novel essay anthropology literature very interesting but he rejected this uh, novel all his life and he didn't want it to be republished we will see when it is republished again uh, in 1939 he returned to cuba it was very dangerous for him to stay in france in 1939 the nazis invaded france so he decides to come back to cuba in 1940, he publishes his essay, Twilight of World Europe, or Dusk of Europe, I don't know what the, 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 the uh, it hasn't been translated into, into English, as far as I know, but this is the, 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 the um, his, his uh, views about what is happening in Europe at the same, at that time, in 1940. You can imagine, is it the fascism that is invading all the countries, etc., etc. A very interesting essay. Well, he foresees also the end of the Third uh, Reich at a certain moment. In 1944, he publishes his, his, short, his short story, Journey Back to the Source, Viaje a la Semilla, one of the most important uh, short stories that he wrote. It's very important because in this first uh, short story, he begins what he will, will be always something that will be a typical of uh, Carpentier's uh, fiction is that he plays with the time. The novel begins at a certain moment and all this history goes back to the source, to the origin of the, of the ca main character uh, in this uh, in this novel, but what is interesting is that the the, the the character that provokes that causes this change in the time is the the black uh, servant of the house that has a certain a sort of uh, I don't know cane that he a eh? staff a staff and he changes doing this uh, he says some strange words he changes the position of the staff and from that moment on. Everything begins to um, to walk backside, to mm -hmm. go backside, as in a film. You can do it in a film. Uh, in 1945, excuse me, uh, in search of more advan adventurous economic conditions, he moved to Venezuela. During his stay in this country, he will publish, I think, the most important part of all his production, because in this time he will pu publish. The Music of Cuba, an essay that was the first essay that tried, tried no, that achieved the fact that of explaining the whole history of uh, our music from the beginning, I mean from the, the, the time where the Indians were living in Cuba, to uh, the, uh, the moment he was writing, which uh, caused him a lot of problems because he he described what was happening in the musical compositions of the time, and of course many musicians were not <laughs> did not agree with the, what he said. But it's a very important book. Nowadays, you see, it was in '47. It has almost 70 years now. Every musicologist that begins a, a, a research work <coughs> about Cuban music has to has to go back to this book because it's very very important for the history of our book. and. Not only it's a history, it's a systematic way, a way of seeing our music, but he discovered some music, some Cuban um, um, composers that weren't absolutely ignored, and and he found the the, the partition, you say the the scores, no, the scores of their of his of their um, uh, works, and he let us know that these musicians existed. In 1947, he writes Vision de America. It's an essay about his visit to the <coughs> Orinoco, Orinoc Basin in, in South America. Orinoc? Orinoco? How is it in English? Orinoco. Orinoc. <laughs> okay, the same thing. <coughs> it's a visit uh, to, um, to the, the Orinoc Basin, and he, he finds, uh, as you can imagine, it's uh, a sort of uh, anthropological uh, essay where it's explained what he has seen in, um, the origin of our uh, continent. 
1949, he writes The Kingdom of This World. It's a very important novel also because it deals with the Haitian, Haitian Revolution. It's the first time that the, um, revolution, the, the Haitian Revolution appears in a novel, in, a, in literature in, in general. And it uh, is important also because in this, uh, as a preface to this novel, he writes this, uh, this essay that is about the real maravillous, the real marvelous. Uh, that was uh, worldwide uh, well known. Then in 1952 he writes, like the night, again a problem of the time because it, it's, a it, it's a character that changes from time, from different epochs in the, in the history. In 1953 he writes, my, the, the novel I prefer, The Lost Text, is about to it's a trip to the core uh, of uh, America. It's a musician that lives in New York. The, the city is not mentioned, but you can imagine that it's New York. And he um, decides for many reasons to go to a country that we know is Venezuela. <laughs> and he begins a, 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 um, a trip uh, following the river. And we still know this river is Amazonas or not, or one of them, this river. And he goes to the beginning of the of our, our civil, civil, civilization i mean from this big city uh, Amer in, in america he begins to go back and he arrives to this town in, in latin america that is a, a, a little uh, 19th century then he goes to another little town in the center of america that is 18th century and so he goes on and he goes and then he finds this um, tribes that live in, in the first uh, community, the, the primitive community. It's a very, very interesting novel. In 55, 54, 56, he sh um, two dates because he has, uh, in 54, he had the, the novel alre already written and it's published partially in France, in French. But um, it was uh, published finally in, in 56. It's the Chase, La, La, El Acoso, a novel that deals with the dictatorship of Gerardo Machado in the, 30, in, in, the, in, the, in, the in the 30s in Cuba. From 1951 to 1960, his daily column, Letra y appears in the, in the Venezuelan Journal as Nacional. You can imagine here you have 10 years in 10 years, every day, he wrote this article for, chronicle article for this column named Letra y Solfa, which means more or less literature and music, the, the main themes that he, but he also um, was interested, was very fond of uh, plastic arts and painting, sculpture, everything that deals with culture was here in, in this uh, column, Letra y Solfa. You can imagine, imagine we have 11 volumes like this of these articles uh, of Letra y Solfa because you can multiply 10 years, 365 <laughs> days, the quantity of articles that deal with everything. You can find the, and that, the, that's the moment you, 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 you notice the, the wide, how wide was his, uh, his culture. He, he was someone, but I'm not supposed to be so enthusiastic. He <laughs> 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 more academic. In 1959, after the triumph of the revolution uh, of 59, he comes back to Cuba, where we participate in numerous cultural issues. In 1962, <coughs> he publishes the, his best known novel, El Siglo de la Luz, which will be the, the center of our talk all today. But it's important because I said that in Venezuela he wrote m most of his uh, most important uh, novels, but uh, he says in his um, interviews that when he came from Venezuela he had already El Siglo de la Luz already written. But he lives uh, a revolution and this novel was dealing about a revolution and they say he 
the scholars in general, and I, I think the same thing, that the novel suffered some changes from 59 to 62, when it, she wa it was uh, finally published in Mexico and the, the following year in Cuba. Then in 1966, uh, he writes, uh, he publishes uh, Tientos y Diferencia, Themes and Variation. Uh, in this um, book, he gathered essays, articles, and drawings that written in the in the in past years in Venezuela and in Cuba. In 1968, he is the Cuban cultural attaché at the Paris Embassy, and he publishes in this period Derecho de Asilo. These titles I will give in Spanish because I, I have no official translation of this. If you have uh, Flavio, you tell me, or someone here, mm -hmm. because I don't have an uh, official translation of this. Every, everywhere it's written in Spanish. Derecho de Asilo. How do you say Derecho de Asilo in Spanish? Right to Asylum. Huh? Right to Asylum. Right to Asylum. El Recurso del Medo, we, it's a play of words uh, with the... Uh, Discuss on, on method. Uh -huh, reasons of state. Like it's it's so. translated already. It's translated yes. reasons. Concierto Barroco doesn't need the translation. Razón de ser, reason of being, <laughs> I would say, essays. La consagración de la primavera is the title of the ballet by, by Stravinsky, with the right of spring, I think is the name in English. And El arpa y la sombra, the harp and the harp. And the shadow. And the shadow, his last novel. Uh, as you see, it's a very productive per period also. But it's true that the, the, the most important novels, of course, are those written in Venezuela and El Siglo de las Luces that was written partly in Venezuela, partly in Cuba. Carpenter was the recipient of the Prix Mundial Sino del Duca in 1975, of the Cervantes Prize in 1977 of the French Prix Médicis Étranger in 1979. I wanted to say also that it's uh, absolutely, because we have the, cor the, 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 the documents, it was proposed twice for the Nobel Prize, but it, it, the, the, the proposition implied that he had to renounce to his feelings about the uh, Cuban Revolution. And he said no at the time. In, ni in, in 1980, uh, it was proposed without condition and he was supposed to begin the Nobel Prize, but he died in April of the 24th, and he didn't get the, the Nobel Prize. Uh, but that's the, the idea about uh, the life of Aleo Carpentier. I suppose that you know mainly this, uh, but it organizes a little the, the, the idea of this author. Now I'm going to talk about this uh, novel, the Siglo de las Luces, Explosion, explosion in a cathedral. You have here the, the title page of the first edition in Mexico, the edition of 1962. Um, I wrote something that for me, but I, I suppose that you know, but I am going to read it simply. It's a historical novel that follows the story of three privileged Creole orphans from Havana as they meet French adventurer Victor Hughes, a historical character, someone that lived really, never visited Cuba, but he lived in the Car Caribbean island in the Antilles Francais, and get involved in the revolutionary turmoil that shook the Atlantic world at the end of the 18th century, meaning, of course, among other things, the Haitian Revolution. Published in 1962, this is one of the most influential works written during the so-called Latin American War. Latin Ameri American War, as you know, it's a commercial name for a, a series of uh, publications that took place in just um, from 1962, I would say, until today, <laughs> I would say. In this first generation includes Carpentier that, be, that had already published a, a lot before uh, 62, but it includes, of course, Gracia Marquez, Carlos Fuentes, uh, and other writers that you know, Vargas Llosa, uh, and others, uh, Sabato in, Argenti in Argentina, and other writers that you know, I am sure, uh, that became the, I don't like the, the term uh, Latin American boom, but it's usual, it's very useful. 
and you know what it means. Regarded as one of the Latin American's greatest historical novels, Explosion in a Cathedral deals with the impacts of the French Revolution in the Caribbean. The main characters are all members of one family, two siblings, Carlos and Sofia, and their cousin, Esteban. The narrative deals with the cyclical nature of control, destruction, and development during the revolution. That stylistically it contains elements of magical realism and, ma and mirrors the tension between Europe and Latin America found in many of Carpenter's other works. That's not my idea, that's what he said in every book about uh, Cuban leadership, but I wanted to, I think it was easier for me to take it from that. Um, some leads that I would like to let, leads, no? Okay. That I would like to point out in this talk. In the first, in the first place, Enlightenment. That is very important for the novel. This novel uh, has a f very important epigraph that the scholar, that you know, uh, Roberto Gonzalez Echevarria, has studied very uh, profoundly. It has a, a first, uh, how do you say, a big epigraph no? yeah. in the novel that says, Las palabras no caen en el vacío. This is an English uh, translation, but this phrase, this um, epigraph is written in Spanish. Uh, it's taken from the very, very old document, it's so hard. The words don't fall in the background. In no? the void. In the void, thank you. Um, and it's something that is very important. Not only the words, the ideas don't feel, don't fail, don't fit fall in the vacuum, it's in the void. It's very important as a lead to the... And what are the ideas that are in, in this moment? The ideas of the Enlightenment. Of course, the French Revolution. That is a sort of consequence, uh, 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 they say it's a consequence, I think, of many things, economical and political, but also a consequence of the uh, Enlightenment. It's, there is a problem of slavery. The revol French Revolution has dealt with uh, slavery in a very particular way. We will talk, we'll talk about that. The other theme, impo important theme, is the guillotine and the struggle that is supposed to come after that. Concerning this Enlightenment, the document, the most important document of the Enlightenment is, without any doubt, the Encyclopedia. The encyclopedia, in, 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 in encyclopedia, encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, this huge work that were done by several uh, French uh, um, uh, philosophers and scientists in general that tried to um, to mo make it more rational, more um, uh, secular, if you want, all the the, the sciences. Uh, you have here uh, the frontispiece of the of the encyclopedia, very symbolic with the truth in this in the center and the, the, the truth. They try to to tear the veil that covers the truth. Which are the encyclopedies the most important that are mentioned or alluded alluded no? uh, in in the net. Of course, D'Alembert, who is the, 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 the principal uh, editor, uh, uh, with Denis Diderot. Denis Diderot is mentioned directly in the novel. Olbach, Jocourt, and you see there the, the themes that they, uh, they, 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 they started, and the arti articles were they made at Montesquieu also. Kenny. Of course, Rousseau, the most important for the, this novel, is mentioned all the time, not only as a writer, but as a, as a musician also, because his opera, the Adivino Soothsayer, no? Soothsayer. Eh? Soothsayer. Soothsayer yeah, of, yeah. The, of the village is very important for the development of the novel, and to go also. Uh, and also to, to go, and finally Voltaire that is mentioned also directly in the... But Carpentier works in a very particular way. Everybody knows Voltaire, everybody knows Rousseau, D'Alembert, and maybe the other one also. 
But at a certain moment of the novel, Carpentier tells us that these three members of the, the young people, members of the family, are reading something. And it's very important in Carpentier when he says they were reading this book, or they were hearing this music, or they were uh, doing that, or were looking at that. And it's very important to see what is looking Carpentier. Where is he looking for? And he says that these young people were, and I copied the, the translation from this man, the, the young people, they used to sit reading whatever took their fancy, old newspapers, almanacs, guidebooks, natural history perhaps, a classical tragedy, or a modern novel set in the year 2440, <laughs> which they stole from each other from time to time. They were very interested in the reading of this novel. I, 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 have, I admit that the first time I read that, I, they, I, this is invented completely by Carpentier. It's a, but it's not like that. There was this novel with this title that was written by one of the encyclopedists, but Carpentier loved the people that nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to uh, follow the, the traces of this. And it's a, a writer, one of the members of the encyclopedia, Louis Sébastien Mercier, that was born in, 19, in 1740, wrote some 60 dramas, none of which passed the, 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 the proof of the posterity. <laughs> 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 so when you have, a, a, but when you make a very profound study of uh, 18th century theater, you study La Bruette du Vinaigrier, I don't know how to translate, La Bruette c'est la carretilla. Mm -hmm. The cart. The cart. The cart. The cart. The cart. Yeah. Of, the, of the vinegar vendor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but he wrote this novel, L'an 2440, Rêve s'il en fut jamais, literally the year 2440, a dream if every day was one. <laughs> was first published in 1770. Mm -hmm. 1770. It went through 25 editions. Mm -hmm. After 1789, the author, Messier, modified some chapters as to reinforce the idea that he had foreseen the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. He died in 1814, the year of the Whatever, of the end, or almost of the empire. Here you have uh, the facsimile of the, of the novel. Mm. What is it all about? This is the Messier, l'an 2440. It presents a simple plot line. The narrator goes to bed after a heated conversation with an English visitor to Paris. Very critical, this visitor. When he awakens, he finds that he has slept for some 617 years. <laughs> <laughs> it is now L'An de Grasse, well, 2440, uh, 2, the years of Mercier. Uh, you, you see, it's a hundredth uh, uh, birthday. The rest of the novel is a 41 chapter long stroll through Paris in which the narrator discovers the 25th century, which has been perfected according to Enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> Enlightenment ideas, both in France and abroad. That's very important, very interesting. The, L'an 2440 demanded and maybe demands is a book I recommend. <laughs> it's translated in, in, into English. Huh? And there have been recent, those who are interested in utopies or uchronies, because it, this is not a, an utopy, it's a, what they call uchrony, because it's a changement of uh, time in the same place. There's not another place. It's the same Paris, but in that uh, year. Um, demanded and maybe demands to be read as a serious guidebook to the future. <laughs> it offered an astonishing new perspective, the future as a fait accompli, 
excuse me, the, 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 the French word uh, expression, and the present as a distant past. It exposed the rottenness of society before his eyes. Don't, don't forget it's 1770, huh? long before the, the French Revolution, almost 20 years before. Messier's hero knows everything that catches his fancy in, in this futuristic Paris. I hope it's well in English or that. <laughs> <laughs> Public space and the Justice Simpson have been reorganized. Its citizen garb is comfortable and practical. <laughs> Remember how people dressed in the 18th yeah. century? Yeah. And he mm -hmm. criticized that, and people were more or less normally uh, uh, dressed. Um, hospitals are effective and based on science. Based on science. Don't forget, for instance, the. Le, le, le médecin malgré lui, hein, euh, yes. de Molière. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, based on size. There are no monks, priests, prostitutes, beggars, army, slavery, coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My country is a coffee producer. <laughs> tea. You can see the tea was not Automobile. And all useless and immoral privilege libraries and literature have been That's it. But there's a chapter, a very interesting chapter, that I didn't find because I didn't find the, the text in English. I am very sorry. But I wanted to show it in, at least in French. At the end of this page, he explained that he was leaving one of the squares and he finds the statue of a, a, a black person and he dem he asks who is this black person that is in a pedestal pedestal how do you say yeah, pedestal. pedestal and there's the, this sta statue at the end je uh, sortais de cette place i was leaving this place when i i look at my right and i saw this uh, statue of a, of a black man who was this black man? You, you can imagine the revenger of Africa. <laughs> the black Spartacus, he says. The, one, the man who delivered, who, who obtained the liberty for all the slaves in America. And so you see that the, in the um, a, a certain representation of these countries, Fra France, Spain, uh, England, Holland, and Portuguese are sub, uh, in, in an inferior position because he has he, he is a sort of uh, a black spark. Mm -hmm. And there is this monument that has been. I suppose that there, there are some among you who can read in French. Don't forget that the F is read as S. Huh? What is interesting is that this man, look at the, the, the following page, il a été l'ange exterminateur, c'est un terme de la Bible, something that comes from the Bible, the angel of extermination, that is in the apocalypse, if you remember. Uh, this, this, this man has delivered the black uh, nation no? from his labor. 1770. And that's what Carpentier is telling me to read. That's what he usually does. He doesn't think. He, they were reading that and they were passing, the, 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 they were stalling the novel one from another. Be, why this novel was so important? That's what Carpentier is telling me. And I chose this e example because the novel is, is uh, full of this kind of. Uh, that's, why, that's why I say that it's a huge novel. It's, then the French Revolution is the other issue that I wanted to say. I will mention only the, 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 the I'm sure you are uh, um, acquainted with the most important, uh, but I want to mention those that are mentioned in the, in the, in the novel. In the first place, of course, the storming in, of, the, of the Bastille in 1789, as you see, almost 20 years after Mercier's book. Huh? Then you have the Declaration of the Rights of Man in 1789, but later in August. And of course, you have the execution of Louis XVI 
16 different stages of the revolution. We have also in, in 1794 the execution of Rechier, the beginning of the reaction of the counter revolution is in Rwanda. In um, November 1799 is the coup d'etat. The, the I won't ask how do you say coup d'etat in English. In 1799, it's the coup d'etat de Napoleon, known as the 18th And in May 1804, Napoleon is uh, crowned himself as emperor of all of the French. If you want, that's the, the most important parts of the. Yeah. I think, too, like to, because I think they asked to, within an hour, to talk so. An hour also? Huh? It's only an hour. Only an hour. Oh, okay. I, I'm <laughs> going quickly now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, this uh, historical person, uh, uh, character that we find in, in novel, Victor Hughes, he he's the the the, 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 um, the, indivi the individual that is uh, called to uh, ins uh, eliminate, uh, abolish the slavery in in America. And I wanted to to show this because Victor Hughes is really a, a, a real personage, a, a, a real um, a character. Uh, what are the contradictory outcomes that that if, uh, get uh, um, are in the novel? The first in the first place, the Napoleon that was a heir of the the ideas of revolution becomes an emperor. Don't you know the what Beethoven said about that? That. <laughs> After a certain time, they go back to the slavery. And Victor Hugo is the same person that comes to the island to say that we are reinstoring slavery. Haiti revolution is confronted. Everybody abandons uh, Haiti. And that's why we have uh, Haiti in the state. It, it is uh, our day, in our day, because everybody will. Spain is invaded by Napoleon. And the, ma the, the Madrid of race is completely uh, massacred by, by, the, by Napoleon. Another symbol that comes, I'm going rapidly now, I, I would like to explain all that, but no time. The guillotine as a symbol is very important. Victor Hugo, when he, um, the big guillotine begins the, the novel, it's the first word in in English translation, in Spanish, he, w he uses the word máquina. He doesn't word use the word guillotina, but guillotine, but you know that it's a guillotina. Um, I was saying that guillotine is a symbol that comes from Fin Victor Hugo. That's someone that you have to read also. In a, in a, se in a very interesting book of by Capretier that is called Scenes, Things Seen, Cosas Vista, Cosas Vu, he, he talks about how the civilization civilization arrives to Algeria in the moment at the moment when uh, France invades or uh, Alger Alger how the civilization and this is the last phrase c'était la civilisation qui arrivait à Alger sous la forme d'une guillotine that's the main that's the same idea that you find in Carpentier that explains that a guillotine arrives in America as a of course, it's ironic, huh? mm -hmm. uh, a way of uh, civilization. civilization. And then this, is wo this word that I wrote, decided to write in Spanish, hay que hacer algo, um, because Sofia, the main uh, ma uh, female mm -hmm. character of the novel, that has this name not by, uh, by hazard, by uh, chance. Sofia is the knowledge, is all that is behind this uh, name. In, in a certain moment, when they are in, in Madrid, they she. This is the. I'm showing it quickly. Sofia left the window. Let's go down there. She cried, snatching down swords and daggers from the collection on the wall. Esteban tried to restrain her. Don't be an idiot. They are shooting. You can do any good with those bits of old iron. Stay here if you want. I am going, says Sofia. And who are you going to fight for? 
for the people who are running into the streets, cry Sofia. We've got to do something. I can say that. And that's the <coughs> last chapter, the last words of Sofia. A uh, what? Anything. Sofia and his brother dies in this uh, moment that it was painted by uh, Francisco de Goya, uh, the fusilamiento. The execution. Huh? Fire expired. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, and I wanted to finish with the explosion in the cathedral. It's another symbol of Capriti. By the end of the of the novel, he says, when the last door has closed, Sofia and Esteban are going to the and Carlos are going and Esteban are going to the revolution and died there. The picture of the explosion in the cathedral, mm -hmm. which was left, left behind perhaps deliberately left you behind, ceased to have any subject. The bituminous darkness emerged it from the, from with the dark crimson brocade covering the main wall of the drawing room, and the scattered and falling columns became invisible against the background, which even now that the light well had gone, retaining the color of blood. But you see here the the picture, the, the painting that he that he mentions, it is uh, paint, paint that in reality is the um, describes a biblical process as a this uh, destroying the idols, but that can be had a, a, another reading completely different in Carpentier. This is the destruction of a cathedral. One can imagine what happens after this explosion that takes place. The name explosion in Catilla is not by Catherine the, 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 um, the painting was known for, uh, for many years with this name because they didn't know. And finally they discovered that re in reality it was uh, the, the subject was Asa destroying the others. Of course, a painter of the uh, late Renaissance, beginning of the 17th century, imagine the the, the Temple of Solomon, of course, like a, a Gothic cathedral, that's normal, no? And, uh, <laughs> it's another symbol very important uh, in the novel and explains that uh, a revolution destroys a lot of things and may turn uh, what wasn't supposed to, to that was the, the this source of some, um, how would I say, People were deceived with this push that happened. What happens mainly with almost every revolution, I would say. And I think that the, the, the most important uh, thing in the novel is the words said by Sophia, we have to do something. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would have two hours. We have, oh I could no. have de <laughs> developed more time, but no, pay, no problem. You if you have questions. a question, of course, if I can answer. So just a quick question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else in Spanish or English? Ah, if you can do it in Spanish, but I think yeah. there are some. Yeah. Well, well, there are some people who don't. Okay. So I'll in translate. English. I'll ask it in Spanish first, and then I'll translate okay. in English. That's what you can Um, so thank you, first of all, for your very good. Muchísimas gracias por, por esta exposición de Carpentier, que es fantástica. Eh, la pregunta que tengo tiene que ver con C.L.R. James y el, el grado de conocimiento que tenía eh, Carpentier del trabajo de C.L.R. James sobre su santo de um, y, bueno, y la reinterpretación que había hecho James so the question I've just asked is about C.L.R. James and the degree of knowledge that Carpentier had about uh, James's you know, rethinking of the historiography of the connections between the French Revolution and the Haitian Revolution. From uh, in, in 1942, Carpentier visits for the first time I did. Mm -hmm. And then at that moment, uh, he it's acquainted not only with the work of James, but uh, of all the writers about uh, about IT and Asian writers like, for instance, Jack Roman. And this, this uh, author 
is very important for the for Kabaddi, not only for this, um, not for um, I think, not for the the um, kingdom of the world, but for his way of analyzing history mm -hmm. and revolutions. Mm -hmm. That's very important. The reinterpretation of James of, of, of this uh, revolution is a reinterpretation that can be, I I think. It's my reading of the can be applied to other revolutions also, and Capetti was aware of that. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Is there is there a particular essay where he mentions James? No. That you can I don't inside a particular when they when they no, 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 no. no, but attend to Biblioteca Personal. In the foundation, yes, in the foundation, okay. we have the personal library of Capetti that contains more than five thousand books. You have seen a picture of seen that. <laughs> It's a lot of books, and uh, you have uh, this. Uh, James, uh, one of them, I think, has some. Uh, some marginalia. Marginalia. Because Cabendin had the bad habit of writing the books he read. <laughs> the bad habit <laughs> now became, became become something very positive because you, he died. He a sort of dialogue with James, and, and not only with James. Sometimes he dialogues with Pla with um, Pla Plato, you're saying Plato, 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 or with anybody. <laughs> with uh, San Agustin, for instance, he read the Confessions of San Agustin, and he all the time he's dialoguing, uh, talking with San Agustin as if he were there. <laughs> no, you are not right. <laughs> That's it. Might have read James's Black Shackletons. Huh? Uh, C.O.R. James is uh, black I don't, Japanese. we don't find this, uh, this book in, among the, the books uh, Carpentier. Maybe he knew the, the, he knew the book, but he, it is not, you know, it's true that Carpentier um, read mainly in Spanish and French. I don't know if by the time Carpentier was, the book was in English. In English. It was in English already? Yes. 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 I don't know if he read, but it's not in our in, in our library. But I am sure that in uh, the black jacket. Thank you. Thank you. With the the twenty four forty book, the the futuristic book from the from the seventeen hundreds. Um, that mentioned this uh, perfected enlightenment future in which all these things have been eradicated and including slavery. Like, could you say more about how you read that existence of that book uh, in in the context of the Sibun de las Luces and its own thinking about uh, revolution and slavery? Well, we have uh, the possibility of working on it also with the manuscripts of Carpentier. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that this book. It's not only that I search for the book, but because in his notebooks, he says, I have to read this book. And we have the document that shows that he asked for this book at the library, at the National Library. And he had this book for a long time. And he took notes that we have about the book. What stroke? It is not said in the, in, the, in the novel, because the novel has more or less, as you see, it's not a very big one. 200 pages, more or less, but we have 2,000 pages of no, of this novel in our foundation. It means that he wrote and he rewrote the, the, the novel. And in this uh, uh, text, he was very interested about some other things in, in the novel, mainly the problem of justice. Justice is something that they interested in uh, this, the apparatus of, of justice in, in, in France. There was another thing that also is to, um, was very important for him, uh, the problem of prostitution and all of the, 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 problem, the, the social problems that, the, the, that had this society at the time. And he even tried to introduce this with the, pers with the character of Rosaura, but he finally he, he decided not to. It's not only the slavery, but another issues that were very important for him. 
Look at the words this at, like this all the time. He only mentions one thing because he said, and it's, that is something that he said, and he was interviewed many times, he said, that he had to know much more about the person, about the characters and the story than what he was going to write. He knew, for instance, you don't know how Sophia dressed. You don't know her. But he had a description of how she dressed that never showed in the novel. Uh, when he talks about uh, the, the opera, the um, uh, Le Devant de, de, de Village, he has a complete description of the, of the libretto of the opera that doesn't mm. appear, only two or three verses. You see, he, he had in mind this word, he constructed a word, and in this case, this book was something that struck him. He was stricken, stricken by uh, this book. Okay? Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. You have been very patient. <laughs>